You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 84. We just heard anthropologist Bruce Huckle tell us about the Folsom people who lived in New Mexico so many years ago. So what were the main things we could learn from his interview? Well, one point was that the Folsom culture existed after the Clovis culture. Another was that the Folsom culture is known by the spear points that were different from Clovis points. And we also saw that the Folsom culture lasted over 700 years and was thus a sustainable culture, sustainable way of hunting and gathering. We learned that bison antiquus hadn't gone extinct yet during their time and that the culture was widespread in North America. Then the clues disappear. There's no certainty what happened to the people of this widespread culture. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment three of episode 84. And now let's do some language work. In previous episodes, we used specific verb tenses to communicate events, actions, and situations in the past. We began with the simple verb tense and then explored the past perfect and the present perfect verb tenses for certain situations. Now today we're going back into the world of grammar to better communicate those actions, events, and situations in the past. First, let's quickly review some of those special verb tenses. We're reminded that the past perfect tense is a great way to relate events in relation to other past events. The past perfect is formed by using the auxiliary verb had with the past participle of the verb that tells what action took place in the past. The same goes for events and situations. An example is, Native Americans had crossed the Bering Land Bridge before ocean levels rose. Now let's review the present perfect tense. Now despite its name, the present perfect tense has to do with actions, events, and situations in the past that continue into the present or which have occurred repeatedly. Now the present perfect tense is formed by using the helping verb have plus the past participle of the verb relating to an event, action, or situation from the past. An example is most Native American groups have adapted to changes that occurred in their environment. Now I have to add a step in using the present perfect verb tense. For the third person singular, the word have cannot be used. Third person singular refers to one person, place, or thing, or idea. That also includes the pronouns he, she, or it. Now see how it's used in the example below. Changing climate has challenged Native Americans many times. Now if you practice this, your ear will be trained to hear the difference and it just won't sound right unless you're using the correct helping verb. With this review in mind, let's learn some ways of clarifying those events, actions, and situations using words that tell us more about them. Words or phrases that further describe an action, event, or situation are called modifiers. Now to modify is to change, but not to change the meaning of the word being modified. The modifier we work with today is called an adverb. Now when you were at the beginning levels of English, you probably learned some simple adverbs. Some examples include, we slowly walk through the park. The adverb slowly doesn't change the action of walking. Let's see. I'm going to pause for just a moment because, oh, here we go. Okay, so, um, so it shows how we walk, slowly or quickly. Native Americans learn quickly to hunt other animals. The adverb quickly indicates the time frame in which they learned. In this way, the adverb modified the verb by telling how an action took place. Adverbs can also be used to relate the frequency at which an action or event takes place. Now, frequency refers to how many times an action takes place or an event occurs within a time frame. Establishing frequency is essential to producing a clear 
an accurate picture of events. Now, since we're studying things from way back in the past, we'll use these with the tenses of verbs we've learned so far in this unit. This is a list of adverbs that modify the frequency. Usually, normally, always, often, frequently, many times, seldom, infrequently, hardly ever, and never. This list spans the spectrum in terms of the frequency of actions or events. Let's take a part of that spectrum and show how these adverbs are working. At the top of the spectrum, we'll start with always. This would be the most frequent. It also makes an absolute statement. The word always indicates there are no exceptions. Survivors always found a source of food. Well, since people can't afford without eating, the adverb always is safe to use here. Moving down in frequency a little bit, we have the adverbs usually and normally, and we'll add routinely. These are still fairly frequent actions, but they convey a certain everyday aspect about them. Native Americans had usually hunted with atlatls. Native Americans normally lived in small groups. Native Americans have routinely settled where food supplies are plentiful. Now, uh, here's an adverb that the, is the most general concerning frequency. The adverb sometimes is squarely in the middle of the spectrum. It shows that the action or event has happened, but it really doesn't say much about how many times it happened. We could use the words at times. Notice sometimes is written as one word. Small fi family groups sometimes joined others to create times, uh, tribes, I'm sorry. I was getting a little bit ahead because this says at times conflicts have broken out between neighboring tribes. Now, we're below the middle of the spectrum. When you, we can't really say something never happens, yet it doesn't happen much, we can use these adverbs. Early Americans seldom had conf confronted megafauna without help from other hunters. Early Americans had infrequently found ice-free areas to settle until the climate warmed. Native Americans had hardly ever failed to adapt to changes in their environment. Now we're back to an absolute. This time on the opposite end of the spectrum from always. The word never should never be used here. There are no exceptions. It can be modified by the word almost though. Native Americans never developed immunity to diseases carried by Europeans. If never is modified to almost or the word virtually, it's no longer absolute. Also, don't use the word literally with never unless you really want to emphasize the absoluteness of the word never.